What's up, people? Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 80 here, 88 here, coming to you with another deck profile for you guys. Uh, today I wanna, uh, uh I wanna spend some time talking, uh, talking about the, this, uh, other deck that I'm gonna review to you guys. And it is pretty much my Dark Magician deck, so let's not waste time, let's get started. So, right here, we have three copies of Magician's Rod. And, uh, basically what Magician Draw does is, when this card is normal summoned, you can add one spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists Dark Magician in its text. And during your opponent's turn, if you activate a spell or trap card, a spell, a spell, trap card, or effect, while this card is in the grave, except during the damage step, you can tribute a spell cast or monster, add this card to your hand, you can only use each effect once per turn. So it's basically a way, you know, to get the many dozens of Dark Magician related cards to your hand, specifically. Uh, next up, free copies of the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dark Magician. Your standard 2500 beat stick. Very, not, very good defense, too. Next up, free copies of Apprentice Illusion Magician. And what she does is rather very simple. You can special summon this card from your hand by discarding one card. If this card is normal with special summon, you can add a Dark Magician from your deck to your hand. During damage calculation, if you if you if your other Dark Spellcaster monster battles an opponent's monster quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard. That monster you control gains two fouls in attack and defense during damage calculation only. So it's basically a way to uh, basically buff up your Dark Magician or buff up your Fusions, which you'll see the Fusions later on. This way you can get over the opposing monsters. It's a very simple strategy. Next up, one copy of Demok. Everybody knows what he does. I don't really think I have to explain. Essentially, during the end phase, you get a spell card from your grave to your hand. It's that simple. Um, one copy of Sorcerer of Dark Magic. I am able to make this when I can, though I won't be able to make this very often. Um, because I because I need both Dark Magician and another level six or higher spellcaster monster in order to make this. And essentially, what he basically does is during a player's turn, when a trap card is activated, you can negate it and destroy it. Uh, and basically, he needs to be face up to activate and resolve the effect. He's basically, um, just, in my opinion, a weaker version of Genzo. Next up, I am also running one copy of Defender the Magical Knight. Yes, I have a spell counter system in this deck. Basically, when he's normal summoned, I place a spell counter on him, max one. And once per turn, if a spellcaster or monster or monsters on the field would be destroyed, I can remove the spell counter from, 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 from my field for each of those monsters instead. So he's basically a way of protecting their monsters. One copy of Blast Magician. And what Blast Magician does is each time a spell card is activated, I place a spell counter on this card. And when that spell counter when that spell counter counter when that spell card resolves, you can remove any number of spell counters from this card to target one face of the monster on the field with attack less than or equal to that number of spell of counters you control that you removed times uh, seven hundred and destroy it. So he's just basically, um, so he's essentially monster removal, essentially. Next up, I am running basically, uh, two copies of Skilled Dark Magician. Very simple effect. Each time you activate a spell card, you place a counter on him. When it reaches free, sacrifice him for Dark Magician. What? One copy of Dark Magician Girl? You always, you, you always have to have a waifu in here somewhere in here. You always have to. And essentially, this card gains uh, 300, attack, uh, 300 attack for every Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in either player's graveyard. So this card can be useful in mirror matches to get over a few beat sticks. One copy of Polenium Oracle Mana. What she does is when your opponent uh, activates a card or effect that targets a spellcaster monster you control and no other cards... While this card is in your hand or graveyard quick effect, you can special in this card. Uh, you can only use this effect once per turn. Level 7 or higher spellcasters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. 
If this card is destroyed by that or a card effect, you can spend, spend some Dark Magician Girl from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So it's just another way of getting your Dark Magician Girl out. Next up, Polinium Oracle Mahat. When you draw this card, you can reveal this card, special summon it from your hand. If this card battles a dark monster, its attack is doubled during damage, damage step only. If this card is destroyed by, by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Dark Magician from your hand deck or graveyard. So he's a, he gets out Dark Magician. One copy of Magician of Dark Illusion. I only have one for now, but I plan to get at least one more. Because I'm planning to run at least two. This card becomes Dark Magician. While on the field, you can only use each of each of these effects uh, of Magician of Dark Illusion once per turn. During your opponent's turn, if you activate uh, a spell or trap card or effect, except during damage trap, you can special summon the card from your hand. If you activate a spell or trap card or effect while this card is face up on the on your field, except during during the damage step, you can target one dark magician in your graveyard, special summon it. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. Very reasonable, in my opinion. Uh, one copy of uh, Chocolate Magician Girl to round up my monsters. Basically, once per turn, I can discard a spellcaster, draw one card, and once per turn, if this card is targeted for an attack, I can I can target one spellcaster type in my graveyard, except for herself. Special summon, then change the attack target to the to pretty much the new target. The attacking monster's attack becomes half of its current attack. So basically, once again, just a beatdown strategy. Uh, next up, onto the spells, I am running two copies of, of Illusion Magic. Basically, I tribute a spellcaster, add up to two copies of Dark Magician from my, from my deck and or graveyard to my hand, but I can only activate one ma uh, Illusion Magic per turn. Next up, this is pretty much one of my tech cards for the deck, one of my mini tech cards for the deck. I am running two copies of Monarch Stormforth. Essentially, what it basically does, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, I activate the card, and I'm allowed to use my opponent's monster as a sacrifice, along with one of my monsters, in order to get a big beater on the field. Or I could just sacrifice their monster in order to get a level a level 5 or a level 6 monster on the my field. It's basically that simple. It's really good. And this is also one of the very few ways that you can get around uh, Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon as well. Uh, next up, um, I'll put the trap cards back here. Okay, we are also going to um, 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 go on to this next card. I had to get it for a minute. Three copies of Dark Magical Circle. Now, this is like the most important card in the deck. When this card is activated, Look at the top three cards of your deck, and then you reveal one Dark Magician or one Spell and Trap that specifically lists this card. The card Dark Magician has text among them. Add it to your hand. Also, place the remaining cards on top of your deck in any order. If Dark Magician is normal or special summoned to your field, except during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls and banish it. You can only use each effect once per turn. So that's a good way, you know, of getting rid of problematic cards, essentially. Next up, one copy of Arcane Barrier. This is pretty much a very old card from, I think, uh, the, um, I believe this is from the DM or the GX era, one or the other. Um, I can't be too sure on that. But anyway, what it does is, um, each time a space up spellcaster monster monster is on the field is destroyed, I place a spell counter on this card, max four. I can send this card and one face up spellcaster right control to the graveyard. Draw one card for each spell counter that was on this card. So it's pretty much more draw power for this deck. Next up, I am running uh, two uh, two copies of Dark Magic Inheritance. Um, what this does is I reveal two. I banish two spells from my graveyard. Add one spell trap from my deck to my hand. That specifically lists Dark Magician or Dark Magician going its text, except Dark Magic Inheritance. But I can activate. I, I can only activate one of these per turn. Next up, one of the newer cards, Secrets of Dark Magic. Basically, it's very simple. I can activate one of these effects. I can either fusion summon one fusion monster from my extra deck using monsters from my hand or field, including Dark Magician, Dark Magician, or fusion material, 
or I can ritual summon one ritual monster from my hand by tributing monsters from my hand or field, including Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl, whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the, of the ritual monster. So basically, if you want to get out um, one of your main fusion monsters or one of main ritual monsters, this card can do that for you. Next up, two copies of Avive Tamias. Essentially what this guy does is this card is also always treated as legendary dragon to Maius. Um, target one Dark Magician you control. Fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck that lists uh, that monster on the field as material. Um, using it as fusion material. You can only activate one itemized per turn. Just another way to get into your fusions. Uh, one copy of Dark Burning Magic. Basically I can only activate this when I control both um, Dark Magician... Um, and Dark Magician Girl. I destroy all cards my opponent controls. Really good back, back row clearing. One copy of Dark Burning Magic. What this does is if I control Dark Magician Girl, I pretty much regeki my opponent's field. One copy of Dedication for Light and Darkness. Um, this is just another way to get Demok out from my hand, deck, or graveyard by sacrificing Dark Magician. And one copy of pretty much Dark Magic Attack. Very simple. While you control Dark Magician, you Harpy's Feather Duster your opponent's field. Next up, I'm running three copies of Eternal Soul. And what Eternal Soul does is this. Every Dark Magician in your monster zone is, effect is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. If this reset card leaves the field, destroy all monsters you control. You only use the following effects of Eternal Soul once per turn. You can activate one of these effects. Special summon a Dark Magician from your hand or graveyard. Add one Dark Magic Attack or Thousand Knives from your deck to your hand. So it's basically just another way to, you know, to get your, to move your spell cards around. And to make sure you, and to keep Dark Magician and, uh, uh and to keep Dark Magician around. And to, and it also helps with Dark Magical Circle too, because every time you normal special summon Dark Magician, boom, you banish. Next up, three copies of the final card in my deck, uh, Magician Navigation. What this does is you special summon a Dark Magician from your hand, then special summon one level 7 or lower spellcaster type monster from your deck. If you control Dark Magician, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one face up spell trap your opponent controls. It has this effect negated until the end of the turn. Very good way of dealing with field spells, continuous traps, and spell cards. And equip cards, too. And that's pretty much the deck itself. Now we are on to the um, extra deck. And we're going to first start off with good old Dark Paladin. Which I can summon this with Tamias. So essentially what this does is, um, basically it must be Fierce Summon to compensate my other ways. But Tamias pretty much can can handle this. Um, when, during your player's turn, when a when a spell card is activated, you can discard the one card, negate the activation. If you do destroy it, this card must be face up on the field. Do I can resolve the effect. This card gains 500 attack for each dragon type monster in a field or in your player's graveyard. So Dark Paladin here can be a big big stick at times. Next up, Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. So this is one of the newer cards here. And what he does is one Dark Magician and a Dragon Monster. This card's name becomes Dark Magician while in the field or in the graveyard. Your opponent cannot tar target spell traps you control with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your by your opponent's card effect. Very good for protecting Dark Magical Circle. One copy of First of the Dragons. Requires two normal monsters. Uh, must be fused some and can hurt some other ways. You can only control one verse of, the, verse of the dragons. This card cannot be destroyed by battle except by battle with a normal monster and is unaffected by other monster effects. 2700 attack points is really nice. One copy of Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight. Uh, must be fusion summon uh, with the above uh, fusion materials or with the Eye of Tamias. Once per turn, quick effect. You can send one card from your hand to the grave. Target one face up card on the field. Destroy that target. So, no, just another way to blow things up, essentially. And I have another copy of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight in here. And for my last two cards, um, Ebon High Magician. Uh, that's This is one of the Xyz monsters in my deck. What he does 
is basically I overlay pretty much two Dark Magicians in order to make this. Well, this card is, is easy material. You can activate a quick play spell card or a trap card from your hand during your opponent's turn by detaching one material from this card at activation. If this Xyz Summon card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, it, or if it has a Xyz Summon, uh, or if this Xyz Summon card you control is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one dark, dark spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck, then you can destroy one card on the field. Very nice effects. Very, uh, I mean, it's really nice that you can detach, activate a spell or a trap from your hand, and it's also good that with his final effect, you can blow something up. Next up, the final card of my deck, Ebon Illusion Magician. And what he does is, just like with this one, two level sevens, you can also exceed some of this card by using a rank six is spell cash type exceeds monster control as material. Exceeds materials attached to that monster also become exceeds materials on the uh, on this card. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, especially when one spell cash type normal monster from your hand or deck. When a spell cash type normal monster declares an attack, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. You can only use each effect. You can only use this effect of Ebon Illusion Magician once per turn. So essentially. You, de you can detach to pretty much uh, summon a spellcaster. And basically when a spellcaster normal monster declares an attack, you can pretty much target a card and banish it. Okay, in a few ways, it's a little similar to uh, uh, to Dark Magical Circle. But anywho, that is it for this, uh, for the Dark Magician deck profile. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and until next time... This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 88 saying see you later.